All right, Eric Agorno here out at the Mike Bender Golf Academy in Lake Mary, Florida with Mr. Marty Nowicki from Impact Snap. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Impact Snap and one of my favorite things, probably my favorite thing the first time that I used it uh, with regards to the straight line release. Now, if I could borrow that for a second. So the first time that I pulled this out when I had this, which I think was before you and I filmed together. I think I was playing it before then. Down, yeah. The first time that I was using it and I noticed, hey, when I make a swing motion with it and I hinge the club up during the backswing, there's something in there that makes a noise, right? That goes down the shaft. Yeah. And then when I come through, there's something in there that makes a noise when I do my release. Yes. And so that was the first thing. When I put this in my hands outside, I'm like, what the heck is this thing? I thought, wow, I think that's a really cool audio sensation. A lot of players that I work with are unsure about this hinging and releasing part. Yep. Hey, Marty, when should I hinge? How much? When do I release? How much? And I always, Marty, like to give specific checkpoints they can hit on video. Yep. But oftentimes they'll say, hey, well, when I'm practicing, right? When I'm practicing, yep. how, do I, how do I know if I did it? So I'd like to talk through using this, how uh, we can get the club hinged and released. Okay. And I'd like to start with, I saw you, you looked a little different, it was a couple of years ago, in a video talking about how, how you would define sort of the release of the club yes. and the angle between the shaft and the left So, arm. yeah, absolutely. So what, what is release? Release in the simplest terms is letting out of the angle between the lead arm and the shaft into a straight line. Say that okay. again. It is in simple terms. Yeah the letting out of yeah. the angle between the lead arm and the shaft into a straight line. That's all release is. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Wouldn't matter if I had a baseball bat. <laughs> I'm going to release the bat into a near straight line. Lacrosse stick, I'm going to release the stick head yeah. to shoot the ball. Hockey stick, I'm gonna release the stick head into the puck. So releasing, what is releasing? It is the wrist angle, or I'm getting the angle between the club and the arm from a, a loaded position into a straight line. That is it. So I've got like four questions. I've got okay. four answers. We're gonna line a couple up here. <laughs> Number one would be, when the club gets into the straight line, yep. like at what point are we looking for that to happen? Ideally, when post impact, first of all, because if it happened before impact, I'm gonna hit the ground too soon, right. okay? Yep, so post impact, roughly about the time the handle gets to waist high. Meaning mm, okay. at impact, it's below waist high because the hands are ahead. Uh, the ball is now launched at some point between where the ball is and when the hands get to about waist high, that's when we would see, want to see, a straight line. Question number two. Yes. Um, let's say we lined up 100 uh, random golfers. Yep. Varying handicap levels. One will be right there at waist high. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so I was going to give some benefit of the doubt and say 98 out of 100 would be sooner than that sure. position. Yep. With that said, if I'm the player who's sooner, and so when I'm giving checkpoints, Marty, and just see what you think about this, because I want to know, once the player knows this and is aware of it, yep. I want to talk about how to train it, yep. and then if, if someone goes too soon. What I like to tell people, uh, I'm less concerned with where it goes on the way back. But Agreed. Let, let's, just, let's just say it's yeah, there, 90 There are a lot of ways of taking it A lot of ways back. to do it. What I see good players do during their delivery, that we can look at some of these, not even in transition, but by the time I get down in the delivery, yep. when the player's hands are roughly in line with the trail thigh. And the club would be about parallel to the ground. So it's still in the air. Still in the air. And yep. this would be a really good indicator for someone to say, how do I know if I did enough, too much, the perfect amount? We'll talk about here, yep. right? But as a delivery position, if they were to look at their swing, the shaft should still be parallel to the ground by the time their hands are here. Correct. The 90 eight out of a hundred would be looking correct this or way. the club would be parallel to the ground their hands are away from the body yeah so okay. they they've already released and that's kind of what we see more of they're not here 
Right. So if they go too early, yep. and essentially just to get to perfect, I always say, hey, like you always have to feel the opposite. Meaning yep. if you're throwing too early, yep. you by definition are gonna need to feel like you throw later. Yeah? Yep. And so if I pull my impact snap in, and this yep. is to me one of the things like I led with that makes this so unique, is the timing of the unhinging. Is the timing yep. of the unhinging. So this little auditory, I'm kind yep. of answering your question sliding here. Sliding weight that yeah. will go up. <laughs> yeah. So th this would be set on the way back. So now bring it to my hand. So it's still loaded. It's still loaded. Slightly behind your hands coming from the inside. Yep. Once your hands pass the ball, let it out. Let it out. And so, so once your hands pass the ball. So if I were to do it too early, yeah. I hear the noise yep. going down right yep. off the bat. Perfect. Now, and I know what's gonna happen is if you're using this at home and you're practicing with it, you're gonna need to have a sensation like, oh my gosh, that feels like my hands are way more forward and I'm holding it way longer. And what I'm saying is that's where you need to feel like if you throw too soon. It should not feel like your normal. Your normal is thrown too soon. We want straight release past the ball. When you put this in and get the auditory piece, it's gonna need to feel like, I, I like to think, hey, my hands, even with the golf ball, the thumbs are still up and back towards the shoulder. Yep. It's gonna feel that loaded to you to get it out in front. That's what's gonna look good when they would record themselves. Right. So I meant to ask you that, but I answered my own question, which is like, if they're going too early, how do they train that? How do they feel that? I've yet to find a training, and I'm not saying this to blow smoke, that I could get that kind of feedback in terms of my wrist angles. And as you and I both know from teaching tens of thousands of people, yeah. the, what's beautiful about this, because people email me all the time, when are you gonna have an impact snap club? I'm like, you know what? You wanna train independent of hitting a golf ball. Okay. Because you wanna, you wanna make sure, can you do the motions correctly? Like if you can't do it with this, you ain't gonna be able to do it with that. Either. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And we do have some, you know, I, I do have some impact snap clubs that I use. And honestly, the feedback is, it's hard to think about what your wrists are doing with a golf ball there. And so, like when you're first learning, yeah, especially it's from a, just from a training standpoint. Let me let me so, hit one with this, Marty. Sure. So as I'm gonna hit with this. What I'm getting the same sensations with, and I'm blowing by this too, which maybe it's another video, but like, gosh, I see so many people who don't load it. Um, I agree with you. I think how you load in the backswing is less relevant, but there can be patterns that can throw sure. people Absolutely. off. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I do like this as well when you go back to have to be hearing the noise, you know, somewhere nearish About left arm chest parallel. High. Yeah. yeah, left arm parallel. The club, the you know, the butt of the club somewhere near the ball target line, just as a reference that would make your life easier from there. But as I'm feeling this working down, getting the handle at the ball or past the ball before I hear that noise, gosh, yeah. that's such a good feedback. So as I pull my club in, I need to get one of those for me with the head attachment too. I don't have we that. Can arrange I got like four of those, but I need to get the head attachment. So when I go back here and I'm feeling the same sensations, keeping in mind that there's a 99% chance that you're someone who throws too early, not too late. Okay, that's a pretty high, pretty high chance. One out of 100. So now if I feel that same thing, I can feel like I'm gonna get the motion. I feel like my thumbs are still up and back towards my right shoulder as my hands are getting at or past the ball. The club head to me feels, Marty, like it's throwing four feet or so past the ball maybe. Correct. Four or five feet past the ball. And then I'm gonna deliver that same exact feel here when I'm hitting. And as I'm practicing this, that was solid. That was the best one of the four I've hit so far. When I'm practicing this, I'm not gonna keep repeating myself, even though maybe we should. Just like there's a 99% chance that a golfer would throw too early, not too late, there's also probably a 99% chance that if you don't do it correctly, you're not doing it enough, meaning exaggerated enough. You're not exaggerating it enough in the beginning. Like I think for most golfers who throw too early, you probably, couldn't throw it too late, like if you tried. It needs to feel like it's thrown so far past impact. Right. You with me on, you agree with that? Yeah. So there's I mean, a, go ahead. I, I think what's important, because obviously we do a lot of videos. Yeah. You do a lot on your own, I do a lot on, on my own, and we repeat ourselves a lot. It's, it's very hard to come up with new 
un breakthrough It's the best content. trail of the week. Yeah, the best right, trail I've ever seen this week, yeah. So why do I repeat the 200 videos that I have out on YouTube that we cycle through and create new ones? Because this stuff is important. You have to repeat it to be good. Yeah. If, if your wrist angles are all over the place, and they've been all over the place for 10 years, guess what? Your ball's mm -hmm. going all over the place. Yeah, exactly. Period. We repeat them because they're the things you need to do. Exactly. It, it's like going to the gym. Yeah, I'm going to go to the gym five days this week. And each day will be a little bit different. But at the end of the five days, I'm doing a lot of the same things t to get my body to yeah, do. Yeah, so what weight I want training. Yeah, so still then the, same thing. the following week, I'm going to do five different workouts. But the grand scheme of things, I'm working every single part of me. Yeah, 100%. You know? 100%. So in, in golf, you know, the wrist arms combination of how to control the club face, you know, that's 80% of the swing. Huge. The knees, pelvis, chest, well, that's the other 20 that gets the arms and club to go faster yeah. if, if that's the desired outcome. Speed, speed we could tick. Impact snap. We're gonna put a link down in the description down below uh, with more info, there'll be a coupon code there. If you're someone who struggles with getting the impact look that you want, if you want more of the shaft lean, right? More of the so-called lag, you don't wanna look like that, you do wanna look like that on the way through. And you want a way to feel it, right? So like I'm at home practicing and I need a way to know that all this practice that I'm putting in is gonna mean something. It's gonna be springtime soon. I'm gonna be golfing. I'm either gonna keep hitting it like I did last year or my swing motion needs to change to hit it better. There are real solutions to those issues. Highly recommend the Impact Snap. We're gonna put the first link in the description down below. Marty, always a pleasure, man. Appreciate it. Great you. to be with Thank you, Eric. This little device here can completely change your golf game. I know for me, when I was really improving my swing in my game, learning how to release the club correctly and what my arms and hands should be doing through impact made all of the difference in the world. Now the question is, how can you learn? How do you know when you're practicing by yourself that you're doing and training in the correct motions? This is where I love the impact snap. All I need to do is take this device right at home and learn how to use this correctly, get the auditory feel that I need, get the feel that I get with the ball on my forearm. And when you purchase this, Marty gives you that seven day uh, training video for you to run through. So it shows you exactly how to use it, if it's right in your golf bag. And I'm telling you, the release pattern, these little micro motions can be the difference between having it on Tuesday and losing it by Friday and having a swing that's consistent and shows up on the golf course all the time. I highly recommend and endorse this Impact Snap. We'll put a link in the description down below.